everyone, this is Steve Elliott here again. Today I'm working in Outrage 5. Uh, I've set up a docking work area and to do that I selected view from the main menu, chose the interface mode and selected docking mode. Basically what that means is I can dock all of my pallets to the side of the screen. So if I undock the toolbox for a second, you can see that it's now floating again but I can uh, reattach it back to the um, side side of the work area and that's really cool because I've got all my main palettes attached to the work area so I've got my color palette here and I can select color and then once I've selected it I can change the saturation of the color from the um, color square at the bottom I can change the level of gray uh, so I've got complete control over any colour. So that those are the colours that I could be working with. Below that I have all my layers so I can create and see that them very easily. I've got this uh, live, you can see on this little window here. I can actually see the, the progress of my painting. This is a thumbnail because quite often you lose the bigger picture. Or if you're zooming in you can see what effect it'll have on your um, all of the painting if you're working in a smaller area you can see what effect that has so I like to see the thumbnail there so uh, that's cool I've got that set up on the left hand side I have uh, the, all the brushes and pencils and palette knives and erasers that I would use in any, any painting whether they would be uh, an oil painting or a watercolour that's my toolbox, which I've set up uh, a custom one for myself. And below that, I've got the settings. So I can change any feature of a brush. So if it's set to auto clean, I can switch that off and toggle it back on again. Uh, well, I've also got the unclean brush for that, but you know, I can toggle between brushes very quickly. But I've also, I can go from a round head to a square head brush at the click of a button. So I don't need lots of different brushes. I've got control over all of that here. I can bump the thinners up. So, you know, it really is uh, full control over my work area. So I'm looking forward to using it. I've not used Art Rage 5 before. This is my first go. This is the painting I'm going to do. I've got two reference photographs here. This is the basic uh, scene I'm going to be painting. I'm going to move people around. I haven't done a thumbnail at all. Uh, I'm going to move uh, the the family to make more of a family group. Don't know why these guys over here. I, I don't know if they're together or not, but I, I don't know these people. But I'm going to make them a family group. And um, there was a lot of pigeons here, a lot. And I wanted to uh, have one or two flying. So I've got this other reference photo where, um, if I zoom out, you can see that they were there was a lot of pigeons flying away. So I can add that to the scene as well. Typical sort of crappy photo that I take. I've got to use my imagination a lot with the light and the colour. I'm going to miss out things like these lamp posts. I don't need them. I don't know what I'm going to do with that wall. That's kind of cutting the painting in off. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I'm looking forward to this. I'll probably move some of these geese with their heads breaking the wall that might be a way of doing it i don't know what i'm going to do with this but anyway um, looking forward to this so let's get started i begin with getting rid of all the rubbish that i've uh, put on there and sort of space it out shrink the reference photos and then as i always do get a local color over the whole of the canvas which is complementary to what i expect i'm going to be finishing up as and then I start using the unclean brush to put on abstract shapes. I mean, they're not abstract. They, they are, in actual fact, the trees, but they look pretty abstract to start with. Once I start getting that bit of foreground in there, now you can see that the trees, perhaps. And I don't really know where I'm going with this. I, I then take a, a palette knife, and I'm using the Ard Out Smudge palette knife. Um just to soften it all off. I like the effect, but it's not really what the effect I'm after. I'll probably keep it for the 
distant sort of shrubs and bushes and things. But not it's not what I'm looking for on the trees. In fact, I have to say, having used Procreate for quite a long while, uh, coming back to Art Rage, it, it was a bit of a struggle to start with, and it took me a while to find my way around the brushes that uh, I'm used to. I'd forgotten which ones I was using, so I had to sort of rediscover those. And I added, you, if, if you're observant, you'll notice to the toolbox, I had a few extra palette knives uh, because I wasn't getting the effect I wanted. Here I had a little experiment, and I'm using the odd out smudge knife again. And I had uh, uh, pushed the loading up a bit to get paint on the palette knife to start adding leaves. And I do quite like this effect. Uh, uh, I like where it's going. But I think I decide that, yeah, it's okay, but I really want a, a more brushed type painting. And then I start uh, getting that way where I'm thinking, I'm putting in too much detail, and wham, I hit it with big blocks of colour again, just to um, get rid of all that detail. I don't want detail, I want big blocks of colour really, that was what I was striving for. I put something in the background there, like a little fence, uh, and I'll knock that back in a bit because that's just too much. Warm up the colours in the foreground to um, make the path look as though it's more forward. And then I create a new layer, and I decided to put all of the people in the painting on their own layer so I could move the position. At this point, I'd already made up my mind that I wasn't going to put the guy in there. I would just stick with the mother and the child feeding the pigeons. And I just sort of rough in some uh, shapes that are kind of pretty close. I'm glad I rubbed that clown foot out. I, that was annoying me a bit. And uh, so I've, I've just sort of got the rough idea. I stretched that pram somewhat so it's the actual correct size. I start cutting away and rubbing out and generally do what I normally do. I'm feeling, I'm searching for the shape, as Borodanti would say, he searches for uh, the shape, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm continually adjusting it till I get something that I think is representative to the photograph. So I'm chopping away, adding all on its own layer, so it's not affecting the background at all. Then I use a palette knife to smudge it a bit, I move, you notice I move the woman to the uh, right of the canvas a little bit. And then I put the, the young girl in. Again, just searching for those shapes. I actually, it went so fast you probably didn't notice, but I uh, put in a mark for a head and a feet before I zoomed in. So I'd got the proportion of the girl right compared to um, the woman, and then I paint her a little pinhead look. So I'm going to have to sort that out in a while. I wasn't too worried about the feet, because I know that they're going to be covered uh, by or hidden by pigeons. Then I start thinking about how I'm going to cope with the light and what I'm going to do with that. So I start putting some highlights on the trees and on, on the woman. Again, I'm I'm not fussed about getting in too much detail. I rub them out because uh, although I like them, I'd put them on the same layer as the girl. So I thought if I want to move the girl, I won't be able to. So I, I rub them out and then uh, what I'm saying, I rub them out. I'm talking about the highlights on the trees. And here we go in with the pigeons. And I was just happily dabbing in random shapes to start with and then I put in a few more detailed pigeons but I was quite liking the effect um you can see look at that just splish splash putting brush strokes pretty much anywhere to start with not not even really thinking about it and now I'm sort of going in there and just picking one or two out still not you know you couldn't call them detailed by any stretch and 
Um, it could be any bird, I suppose, but just the odd one here and there in the um, mess that are all the blobs to give you the impression of pigeons. And then I created another layer below the pigeons just to put the shadows underneath the pigeon and I set that at an opacity of 50%. Still just, I really enjoyed playing around and, and adding more pigeons as I went. Just sculpting the shapes, painting them in, and then chopping them away with the eraser. I was messing about with um, palette knives as well. I added the frost palette knife, and I like that because that was something I'd been trying to do and not been able to achieve with the other palette knives, where I could just sort of smudge the edge a little bit so every sharp line isn't so apparent. And then I got a bit crazy and... Um, softened up uh, too much in places and to go back and paint it in I thought right let's get a few of those geese in there just to add something to the mix uh, I thought once I'd painted that and I kept, you see I keep zooming in and out just to check it although I've got that little thumbnail which is really nice um, I overpainted the geese a little bit with some of the soft purple colour just to balance it out it was stuck out like a sore thumb I thought and it needed just knocking back a little bit and I thought this what I'm doing now I'm just adding highlights to the pigeons and again in many cases it's they're almost random marks but sort of picking out a highlight on their head or the edge of the wings or the the back and and then I go in with another geese. But I think those highlights really make the pigeons pop. Really lifts them out. Just fine tuning it. I thought the girl's head was too small. Uh, I, I thought her, phone, her hand looked like she was holding a mobile phone. So I didn't want that. And then I messed about with this face for ages and ages and ages. Just trying to get something... With no detail in it, but was clearly a face. And sometimes that is not easy to do. And I was, um, I thought I got there at one point and then zoomed out. I thought, oh God, she's got a pin head. Let's make her head a bit bigger. And then I was sort of lost the shape and I had to refind it. And I was sort of chopping out. And eventually I came up with something that I really liked that was abstract. And that is it. I really hope uh, you like this video. If you did, a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated. And um, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I've got a lot more videos like this in the pipeline and I'd love to be sharing them with you. So uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.